Hi, welcome to AGD's Business Basics. This is episode two, and today we're gonna to talk about the five tasks, typical tasks that are within the basic services of an architect's contract. So stay tuned. basic services that an architect puts in a contract are typical, but they're not always seen on a project. I'm going to review these five basic services, but know that sometimes these services may not be used at all, or they might partially be used, or you might see that you pick and choose based on your project type. So let's take a look at these services and give a little insight into what you might find in that contract when you review it with your architect. The first is schematic design. Schematic design is basically the iterative process of coming up with different options for a design. That's when you take into account the programming, maybe the site context, the characteristics of the design, it might have to be do with the aesthetics or the code, and you organize them into principles that form options. These can be floor plans or 3D, and they're presented to the client for approval. That schematic design gives birth to the next phase, which is actually design development. And in design development, we take that one option that is chosen by the, the client, the owner of the project, and we further refine that. Typically, the design development uh, refinement takes the complexities of mechanical, electrical, and plumbing, structural engineering, sometimes civil engineering, landscape, and puts it all together into a, a package of plans, elevations, maybe renderings, material, and we explore that. And in that phase of design development, we actually might be able to take that and submit it for a planning application. In the world of architecture, there might be multiple discretionary reviews needed for a project to be approved through a city, through a county, uh, maybe through an HOA. And that design development task usually finds up, uh, refines that one design into something that can be submitted. After that's been approved, maybe the planning application has been approved and accepted, we take that design development and we turn it into the third task or the third phase, which is construction documents. Now construction documents is interesting because there's actually two parts of it, but we don't always hear about it. In construction documents, we usually hear about the first part, which would be the actual plans. The construction documents are drawings that show the design of the plans, the, the floor plans, the elevations, the, the sections, they're something that a contractor can use to build from. But they're usually supplemented in most projects, specifically in civic projects or government projects, by a second document. And this document is basically a project manual. And that project manual has a couple different things in it. The first is specifications. And that's the confusing part is usually this is called a spec or a specification package, but the project manual has the specifications in supplement to the construction documents or the plans to talk about the specifics of the products that are shown in the plans. So the plans might talk about the location and the quantity of something, right? But the specifications talk about the quality, maybe the manufacturers that you could use, the color, how to install it or store it. The specifications are part of the project manual and they're included in there because that's a contract document that somebody needs for bidding. A contractor will come in and bid that. And that's what the other part of this project manual is, is the bid documents. Now the bid documents might have announcements, they might have contractual language, the actual contract, they might have uh, addendums and alternatives for you to bid. Now those bid documents are part of that project manual and they have to be submitted for that fourth phase or that fourth, fourth basic service that an architect will put in a contract and that is bidding and negotiations. We also call it procurement. Now in procurement, we go out and we find a contractor or multiple contractors and uh, we work with the client to bid or get proposals from the contractor for the work that needs to be done as part of the construction documents and the project manual. Both of those things are uh, what is usually bid by the contractor. Now during that phase, the architect is available and in our case, in our office, we're available on an hourly basis to assist in questions, uh, request for more information or RFIs, 
And that is an assistant of, of expertise to the client. We provide that as a service because we want to be able to explain what the client may not know about the documents that we produced. After this phase and after a contractor has been awarded, the architect comes in for the fifth basic service, which is uh, construction administration. Uh, sometimes it's also known as contract administration. In construction administration, we walk through the process of construction with the contractor and with our client. Uh, again, for our case, it's at an hourly rate uh, and an hourly basis. And that's where we spend the most time on a project. We review uh, requests for information, we review submittals, we walk the site, we do site observations, and we report back to the client that the contract documents or the construction documents are being followed. And that's a really, really important step. Uh, in our case, we include that in our contracts as a basic service, but it may not be utilized to the fullest because sometimes contractors have a very good head on their shoulder and they, they know exactly what to do. And that's great for us. That just limits the amount of time and money uh, of expense that we are charging our clients. And ultimately the product could be a, a lot better in that case. So those are the five basic services that an architect might put in a contract. And we bring this up because we wanna make sure that you understand what you're getting into. So when you see those five things, schematic design, design development, construction documents, procurement or bidding and negotiations, and construction administration, you know that the architect and the architect's team is following the basic services that have been outlined time and time again over years and years and years as a service that they provide a client. So if you want to know more, get in touch with us, Andrew Goodwin Designs. Follow us, subscribe somewhere on here at YouTube, and uh, we'll see you on the next episode of Business Basics.